Das Viable System Model von Malik ist ja seit langem etabliert und existent. Science Film hat jetzt neu ein Redesign für DVD in englischer und chinesischer Sprache produziert. Für Originalinformationen bitte auf den YouTube-Link klicken. Der geht direkt zu Malik. Perhaps the most effective system of control is the human nervous system, able to maintain our viability in a rapidly changing world. If we identify the key control mechanisms that ensure this viability, we can create a model that might be applied to a business or any other social organization. Let's start with the basic units of such an organization, interacting with the outside world the division in an enterprise, the state in a country, or the team in a large project. There's always a management controlling an operation that is doing something in a changing environment. Environment, operation and management together form the fundamental unit of an organization. The environment and operation dynamically interact. For example, the operation serves its customers in the environment, just as the expectations of the customers influence what the operation does. In the same way, management and operation interact. For such interactions to be effective, a maximum degree of autonomy, freedom and flexibility is required. When we look at several units, there is almost certain to be an overlap between their environments. One example involves serving common clients. There are also likely to be dependencies between operations because of benefits from the use of common resources. These overlaps and dependencies need to be regulated to coordinate activities and prevent conflicts. This coordinating system involves meetings, schedules, general guidelines, shared services and other supporting functions. The focus of management within each unit is to run its own operation effectively. Therefore, there has to be a system to oversee and optimize the units. This ensures that the whole will be more than the sum of its parts. It's the job of this senior management to detect and realize potential synergies and to design the coordinating system itself. It has a direct interaction with local management for example, to give directions, allocate resources and resolve disputes. For informed decision-making, senior management also needs to access unfiltered information direct from operations in order to see what's really going on. It's easy to see that such operational spot checks, audits or inspections can highlight anomalies, whether in a business, a state or a project team. So far, we have an optimized organization going about its everyday business. But what about the greater environment? And within that, how to deal with opportunities and threats, new technologies, competition, emergent markets, new laws? There needs to be a senior management system focused on this greater and changing environment, outside and then, in addition to the system concerned with inside and now. It's responsible for the detection of such external changes as they happen and for ensuring that the organization adapts in a proactive way. Planning for tomorrow might well pose threats to current operational needs and vice versa. What is required is to balance the needs of the future with the needs of the present. This requires a very open interaction between these two systems. However, even where this interaction is balanced, situations may arise which lead to deadlock. What is needed is a normative decision at a higher level. This requires a third system of senior management. Here lies the responsibility for the definition of the purpose, mission and boundaries of the organization. It lays down organization-wide guidelines as well as observing the ongoing balance between what is right for today and what is right for tomorrow. 
These five systems provide the necessary and sufficient conditions for the viability of an organization. In one form or another, they are found in any system that is viable, whether natural or social. However, evolution has structured organisms in this way over millennia. Social systems need to be designed for viability. We started by looking at the management, operation and environment of a single unit within an organization, before going on to consider what is necessary for several such units to form a viable system together. We also stated that the operational units must be viable in their own right. They need the flexibility, authority and identity to maximize their relationship with the customers in terms of their own operations. What this means is that if we look at any one of the units in more detail, we discover exactly the same structure. This is true for each of the operational units. In general, every viable system contains several viable systems and is itself part of a higher level viable system. This principle of recursion allows you to apply the model to any hierarchical level in your organization, independent of size, complexity or type using the same diagnostic tools and methods. The model allows focus on any particular level of an organization, while taking account of the impact of higher, lower and external systems. It is a model for any viable system.